last day comes with a note of sadness as well as departure. Some food has already left us and uh, some are maybe still uh, thinking whether to come or go for other engagement. So let me call the poets of this session. Uh, Kamal Din Ahmed from India. Sujana Perugu, India. Nandini Sahu, India. Uh, and Ramchandra Borel, Nepal. Kamlul Islam, Bangladesh. So I think I Sujana Perugu, we begin the session with Kamaluddin Ahmed of India taking his poems. Of 
frequently wheel of its high toy cars, pictures, carnival clouds, market forms, sickness parts, the two wheels become hazy, spectral, starrier, lie, sweat at my midnight by my feet. When I go to sleep, these two wheels of reality start rolling in dreams over popular places I like and dislike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next poet is Nandini Shahu from India. Professor Nandini Shahu is a major voice in contemporary Indian English literature. She is a poet and a creative writer of international repute, USA, UK, Africa, and Pakistan. She is the author editor of 13 books titled The Other Boys, Recollection as Redemption, Postmodernist Delegation to English Language Teaching, The Silence, The Postcolonial Spirit, Writing the Self and the Nation. She is the poem of Merit, Folklore and the Alternative Modernity, Volume 1, Folklore and the Alternative Modernity, Volume 2. Sukama and other poems, Shubharna Rekha and Sita. Dynamics of Children's Literature. Zero point. Published from New Delhi. Thank you. 
eyes. He is the ugliest, loveliest God. Dan up. He is the round eyes. If you judge from the point of view of beauty, then perhaps he is ugliest. But if you look at him from your heart, from your soul, he is the loveliest. So again, with his dark and ugly face, we are giving a message to the universe that you should never hate the dark complexion people. Rather, everyone is beautiful, everyone is unique in their own way. So zero point again accepts and embraces the whole universe without judging anyone. And this is one small point. I think my you will give the answer the poetry. Give us the point. Yeah, sure. So uh, my little son asked me why is he incomplete. So my answer to that, Lord Jagannath. The God we have done less. When my words are overcooked and the double term obscurity of the obeyed heart, I wonder what is the need for grief or alarm, independence or a lack of sovereignty, the heavy cold and dirty, the saving accounts, the artificial care of the neighboring beauty, the moon, the calendar unmeasurable, omega 3 tablets, love, lust. Or even poetry, what is the news? Mother, why doesn't he even have complete limbs? Who left him like this? Half done? Why is he flat? Why are his eyes always swollen and unblinking? I search for answers in my intrepid, unfaced heart. None challenge at the net rose. I think of children whom the world has deserted because they have half done limbs. The dark skin spoke of the frozen time. I ponder over their properties, their ancient limbs and face spinning into a fabulous. It's Sunrises, my son. It's his way of humanizing the values of tolerance. The Lord of the universe, Lord Jagannath, without complete limbs, with an ugly face, ugly, unblinking eyes, and a dark skin, is a charming, a charming of all. Highest of all, the most accomplished, the most adorable, most alluring. Then I know it's the first light of creative contemplation, the sacred form, ingenuity, breaking the characters of offense without orders from above, and their stars could. Thank you. Thank you. I will request now Ramsar Gopal. Ramchandra Borel is currently working as a dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Humanities and Education. He is primarily a professor of English and worked at the Central Department of English, Tripurvan University, and taught there for three decades. He writes poems in Nepali and enjoys Hindi poems. Thank you, sir. Uh, wonderful people here in this room. From the Mountain Sabdora Bora, down in Kanyak Kumari, from Mount Everest to uh, Pia Kanga. So, <coughs> I am very happy here to present my point. But, uh, first of all, I would like to offer the context of my point. Uh, the title of the poem is Politics of Feeling. And uh, the context is taken from Dharma's poem. The reference is on uh, the television channels, like CNN, BBC, New York Times, and other channels in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, uh, this poem uh, refers to this is not an example of, uh, of art or art shape. This is not in the clip of books where the rock uh, This is not an example of genuine women's project. That Dr. Samuel Johnson commented on this process. This point is the hand of artists political purpose. Uh, the context is global context in the class of civilizations uh, in the present day world. What is politics of killing? 
if you define one feeling as civilized and just and other as barbaric, you are defeating the purpose of your scriptures. If you tag one feeling as humble and holy and the other feeling as brutal, you are defying the purpose of Jesus and Buddha, Purana and the Purana. You are defeating the purpose of all the hybrid groups all taken in the name of your gods. You are defeating the purpose of Parpaya, Parapetanam of Hinduism. You are defeating the purpose of Ahimsa, Parampa, Dharma of Buddhism. You are defeating the purpose of Tao Shah, not King of Christian. If you consider your works as good works and the bears as evil, if you consider your massacres as bear incidents and bears as terrorist acts, you are defeating the purpose of your scriptures, you are defeating the purpose of the whole humanity. Killing is forever evil, whether it be in Hiroshima or Damascus. Whether it be in your schools or towers, whether it be in Tora Bora or in Pearl Harbor, killing is unambiguously and unstrategically evil. If you kill, if you kill people to serve your petty political purpose, you are defying the purpose of your scriptures. Killing may differ in magnitude and purpose. It is unambiguously inhuman. If you consider your fellow citizens as anti national and alien, and the freedom seeker as a terrorist, you are defeating the purpose of your constitution. <coughs> you are defying the spirit of your constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kohler. Uh, the next poet is Kamlu Rizna from Bangladesh. He is a poet, novelist, he says, genesis, and an organizer. He edited, edited uh, Kundaram, a magazine based on art, literature, and culture. He is the Secretary General of Bungyo Council for Literature and Culture. He is also a publisher and published many books of essays and poetry and novels. So his poetry books are Mao Monpaki, Mother and Soul, Kale Nataraj. So next is Kamru. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. First point, Kale Chita, translated by Professor Abu Dhabi. Blood goes out of my bone at the fragments of Chompa and Kalu. Evening Jackpot, bad at my plum, at night rain hours. So that does John City waters, I stay bruised in the plums of mountains. In the gray evening, in the careless prayer, with very good nature. The gorgeous sun beams lie in the light to open, the palm frames of the paper. At all hours, I pass through the months of cloth in the artistic design. The knowledge of the universe in the cross, the leaf of light here, the sky covers the meadow of eternity, destroys the abode like death. The light of love, heart love, in the entertaining dream, the conscious act, faint and green cloth, born in horizon of art. The Pravidhi in the Abhaya, Britain. Miss Hong in Shri Shan Shalal Jamal, the Abhaya of the Sky Prayed the Sun. The Muli Sri in Achyamiti Prayed the Dragon Flies and Fireflies Spread Over the Flies. The Blue Sea lay just there. The sea water is still wall of the flies. In the century, old parts are streaming from close. The five oceans are three times. The stars 
from visible dark, silent beach, crashes, blooming oil of the river, crazy lives falling in the midst of peace, supple land, dreams with people. Second. <coughs> The context was crying on the banks of Blue Rose of Murai as the prize. Then the beautiful place used to be. All the last hours of night, the sky covered with the paint of years, is still the time was not rain. In this ever to obstacles in deep dozens, the sunlight remained as a prize the trend. I told for how many years I thought of God. In Korean night, the keepers around passes me all day. When in meditation, God, O oh star, in the arms a trace, the grace horizon are to you recalling in the numerous flow of the star, in barn of the earth's coast, away in Jonah, dark of the forehead, the flowing leaves touch our sleep, O oh, Chakravati, in the time scenario so many desires, I flow with fragrance of flowers, the separation of the cover, five arrows and struck of four desires, under the refugees of fire, happy. And I sing the song of Amor's song as a refugee in the path of century, far and hard, I travel regularly as a despicable person of motor. I mean, Uh, 
he is one person <coughs> who gave importance, all importance to truth, both in his life and in politics. But today we are having a politics which is separated from truth. Day by day it is going and drifting, drifting away from truth. The difference between truth and lies are becoming blurred. And we see in poetry also that poets are trying to overcome the struggle time, the difficult time that we are passing through. The Marxian historian Eric Hobsbawm dumped this time as a fractured time. This is the fractured time we are passing through. So we need to rejuvenate, need to mix it up from the Asia. So I will not uh, go to uh, comment on the poetry because why can say that listening once a poetry don't try to analyze it or make a comment on it. And I feel that it's also unwise to make a comment on a poet listen to two or three points of him or her. So let me go with my own poetry. Life is a journey of journey through experiences. Most some experiences are very important areas and significant, we keep them in memory. But some are trivial and insignificant, we forget them. But through them, we sometimes realize the more uh, valuable lessons of life. So first poem gives two scenarios. Ten feet. Two flowers on a tree, roses. One fell with the rain, the other on the tree. So who is envious now? It is rain and rain that cause the fall of the rose. An ordinary death that goes unsung. It flows fast, tipsy on the current. What a beauty this is called as a bees. Many things follow the rose, branches, foliages, twigs and a host of urban refuses. Leaving all these two women run after the rose, make a row over his savior, and will delight to enjoy the roll about. Observing this from a treetop, a small flower falls sick with desire and envy. The next scenario is injustice. A house full of relatives moving boisterous and chanting noisily. Unpretentious they fly in with destroyed mouth, household relations. They leave behind brown feathers, grains of sound, killed on the bed, and then shoot up the fly sparrow. The bulbul in a cage over my bed frowns to say something has gone wrong with the game. And the second one is about that we have been saying that humanity is at stake. But at the same time we realize that human beings are at stake. Human beings are struggling to remain human beings. So this I've been trying to find out how we are struggling. Protest. It's time to squat, to stew, for the obstinate and impertinent are the exam. Queer fellow with one track mind leads a very ugly and odd life. All others the voice is tall, queer and humor of an almost extinct pussy. We need love for one another, it's true, to hear whistles breaking the spine. Because it is not only ugly, but also unnecessary. And despairing all the problems of whistles, they enjoy themselves in inverted ways. Exit. And finally, human. Stretching and rolling within your body is the monkey, an ancestral soul. The dog holds you with a try to excuse the hyena to target you. To get rid of this bestial aggression, you desperately take a pretext that you are a human being. How long you have been human? All over your body stretches and rolls, 
a greedy yesteryears. In your large and large epopra grips, now scrape is far beyond. Your puppet of deception, paying huge ransom, could you finally become human? Thank you.